All right. Sultai Vanifier combo. So the core of this deck is standard legal, but we get some really meaningful solid upgrades in historic. So how this deck works is with Vanifier, a one mana creature, if you untap with Vanifier and have a one mana creature in play and an untapper in your hand, you can deal upwards of 40 damage to your opponent. So how this works is Let's say, okay, so let's 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 walk through the chain. So you untap with your Vanifier and you have Land War Elves in play. You use Vanifier to turn Land War Elves into Corridor Monitor. Corridor Monitor untaps Vanifier. You have Corridor Monitor uh, get turned into Tower Scout. Tower Scout untaps Vanifier. You have Tower Scout turn into Nightmare Shepherd. Then you play a Corridor Monitor out of your hand and then to untap Vanifier. Then Corridor Monitor with this Vanifier gets turned into Woe Strider. The Corridor Monitor comes back into play with Nightmare Shepherd, untaps Vanifier. Then that Corridor Monitor token gets turned into another Tower Scout. Tower Scout untaps Vanifier. You turn Tower Scout into another Nightmare Shepherd. Tower Scout comes back into play with the first Nightmare Shepherd, untaps Vanifier. And then you chain these on up into Grey Merchant, of Asphodel here, which comes into play, drains the opponent, then you sacrifice the Grey Merchant to Woe Strider, it comes back as a token and drains them again. We can do this twice through untapping our Vanifier with copies of tokens of these, which is just wonderful. So I believe, I believe you could update, update the, uh, the damage to get somewhere somewhere in the range of 40. So the big upgrade we get in Historic is Land War Elves in this deck. So the key to being able to combo is that you really need a one mana, one mana creature to get going. So getting to double up our one mana accelerants from just playing Goose to getting to play Goose plus Land War Elves means that we'll be a lot more consistent in that when we untap with Vanifier, we're able to actually win the game with it. Because there are situations when you don't have that one mana creature or you don't have the untapper in hand where you get to untap with your key card, but you don't actually win the game. Past Elves, we also gain some upgrades in our mana base. We get to play the uh, the excellent the excellent Dominaria Buddy Lands. And then in the sideboard, we've got some Maelstrom Pulses and some Ravenous Chupacabras as utility cards. And we've got Legion's End here to clean out zombie tokens and buy us a little bit of time, potentially on top of the Pulse. Spark Double isn't utilized in the general combo chain. However, having access to a Spark Double in your deck can get you out of sticky situations where you've drawn too many copies of particular combo pieces. So in an ideal world, you never need to Spark Double. But in the less than ideal world, in the games that we're actually playing, there's going to be cases where you run out of untappers or you drew both your Grey Merchants, you already have one in play, where Spark Double is going to allow you to win a game that you otherwise wouldn't be winning without it in your deck. So let's go ahead and dive into some matches here with this one and see how it goes. This is one of the many standard decks you could find up on my website, which probably isn't super competitive in standard anymore the way that format shifted. This format is a little bit more, doesn't have quite as many people brazen borrowing and tefering you, some, but not as many as standard. So I think there's a chance this still stands up here well. Thank you for the nudge on the title. I believe I did the deck. Mulligan this. If a hand feels close but doesn't have Vanifier in it, mulligan it. Yeah, I think that's true. I think in general that I think in general Brazen Borrow tends to be worse in this format because it's a little bit lower to the ground in a lot of instances. There's more decks that can punish that type of gameplay in this format. There's more what I would refer to as honest aggro decks going around. Better late than never here with the one drop. Croxa. Um, 
Just gonna bend Tower Scout here. Block. I'm gonna hold on to the Elf for now, because if they have another Crocs, I want to discard that instead of my Neoform. Neoform with Bow Strider is my ticket to, uh... My ticket to Avana Fear. Three cards total in my bin right now. We need five to escape Ghost Rider because it's escape four. Yep, we'll see. If they don't have Murderous Rider here, we're not guaranteed to kill them next turn, but we're going to get set up pretty well to do it. They have Bajooka Bog in their main deck. That seems ambitious. All right, it's not a Murderous Rider. So again, we're just gonna go, and this is one of the reasons why this deck is good too, in my opinion, because even when you don't full combo on a turn like this, you still get to put a good amount of pressure into play. So like, I'm gonna go right on up the curve here, and we're gonna grab a Nightmare Shepherd, and then because I don't have another untapper, I can't full combo this turn, but we'll be able to combo next turn. And now because I have Nightmare Shepherd, they can't just, uh, they can't just kill my Vanifier anymore, even if they draw it. This also put enough things in my bin so I can escape this Woe Strider. Put this land into play and pass. Defense. Defense. Work from home entertainment at its finest. Thanks for the 31 months, Wraithmore, and I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. So our opponent will be deterministically dead next turn. I don't understand what you're asking, Kurt and she. I think what you're asking implies that is implying that I could have gotten Nightmare Shepherd while still having an Untapper in play, which is untrue. And hopefully 20 more. Thank you for the 20 months of support, Tron player. I appreciate that. Welcome back. That's true. Main deck Ashiok is good against what we're doing. All right, so they may not they might not know it yet, but they are dead. I don't, I don't think the line you're talking about actually works, Kurt and she. Unless you're talking about discarding something else instead of discarding Tower Scout, which I think discarding Tower Scout was correct at the time with the information that I had. I think you answered your own question. The mana is bad by attempting what you're suggesting. And the number of games that you're winning. Part of part of the problem with ma why making Vanifier hasty isn't good is because um, making Vanifier hasty doesn't mean you usually win that turn because you also need an untapper in your hand to win the turn you go off. So if you have to cast an untapper anyways, making your Vanifier haste really doesn't matter because you're not going to have mana to cast for that turn anyways. All right, so because I, I I think we basically always board in Maelstrom Pulse because of things like Ashiok and other random hate cards they could have. I think this is a matchup where I'm interested in bringing in Fine Finality to grind a little bit. Legion's End hits Croxa. It does, doesn't it? 
Is that the axis I want to play on? Do I think do I think I want to be a super interactive deck in this matchup? That would be the question I'd want to ask myself. I'm bringing I'm bringing this in as an anti-interaction card more than anything. I'm not sure that I really want the Legion's Ends as well. You mentioned that the white creature that gives protection would be sweet if the mana worked. Would a white splash work in Historic for God's Link? No, I don't think the mana is good enough in this format. Long. I think the mana barely supports the three-color deck. Yeah, Le Legion's Ending Croxa after it's already made you discard twice doesn't sound super appealing. Yeah, I keep this. Their, their archetype is likely playing a bunch of discard spells post-board, so like, there's no guarantee that if I mold a Vanifier, I'm going to get to cast it. He's dead, Jim. You've killed him. I'm holding on to the corridor monitor in hand for now because it, uh, it can untap Vanifier once we get going with it, which is nice. I assume they're going to mill themselves here. They must not understand why that card's in their deck. They must have just copied a necklace from someone. I guess I guess they milled two corridor monitors there. But like, this is a good card to bring in here, but this is in their deck to mill them, not to mill us. This is, this is actually explicitly why I brought in Maelstrom Pulse. Because it does stop Vanifier from searching. Oh, I should have played the untapped lane so I can make a food, right? Something something worth noting is that this still exiles your opponent's graveyard even if you target yourself. Wow, that card's actually really good against us, huh? It, like, kills Vanifier and then, like, we have relevant instant sorceries in our deck. That seems sweet. Man, they, like, really hate our graveyard, huh? So, I'm actually just going to Maelstrom Pulse this Mire Triton, because this isn't going to have anything to take out of our hand, right? Non-creature spell. I mean, I guess I guess they've made our Woe Strider worse, which is one of our grindy elements. We're gonna sack the goat here. Are we? Nah, we'll wait a turn to sack the goat so we can jump block the bone crusher. It's probably correct. He says before he draws another land. I wonder if this deck wants like. I wonder if like three mana Vanna Fear is a card I may be interested in. Or three mana, three mana Vanna Fear, three mana uh, Vivian. Or maybe even, maybe even five mana Vivian could be okay here. Five mana Vivian destroys some hate cards. That's a card that's not standard legal. Is that a card worth playing in our sideboard? I feel like it might be. Is that, is that better than Find Finality perhaps? Like, could you imagine if we had just kept a five mana Vivian on top of my deck there? That sounds like really good, right? Like it kills, she kills Grafdigger's Cage and Sorceress Spyglass. I got you, Amy. Yeah, I think we're gonna put like three five mana vids in the sideboard after this and give that a go. Yeah, I think that's like exact. I want I want a card that can two for one them, right? And like these kind of two for one them, but I want something that like can get a steady flow of cards going. 
And that Vivian, Vivian sounds like exactly that. Hey, look, a 1 1 flyer. Yep. So I'm going to go block, block, sack this, scry one. Opponent messing up their sequencing a little bit here. Definitely. Could have made a food? Uh, no, I couldn't have. I just cast that card. go ahead and sack this and bring it back there's only two cards in my bin right now so now with nightmare shepherd in play i'm not super likely to get more in my bin i think i just want like a blocker here i take damage if i discard a land anyway so might as well play it out yeah gosh is that fine finality had been a vivian Gosh, deck deck building in non-rotating formats is so much sweeter. You're like, all right, instead of playing this kind of medium fine finality when people are boarding in graveyard hitting against me anyways, what if we get to play a good card like Vivian? You'll love, you'll love to see it, chat. Creeping chill. Jeepers. Creepers. And they milled us with Ashiok. So I'm going to leave myself dead to another Creeping Chill here. Because I have eight power in the air. Just going to hope they have nothing and try and kill them. All right, so, huh? Yeah, Vivian. Big, big mama Viv. It's been a while. Am I off standard at this point? If so, why? Well, I mean, we've played standard every day. So to answer your question pointedly, I mean, based on data, no, we're not completely off of standard, but I am playing less standard and I intend to take less standard until the next set drops. I mean, you could, you should just go watch the matches of standard rather, rather than me telling, telling you that it sucks. You should go watch and watch us experience it. You go, you go watch standard for the last two or three days, last week or so as the format settled. It's not, it's not kind to what we do here. Pioneer was all right. We went two and three. We played a mediocre mid-range deck. It was mediocre. I think that's the only change I want. Is four Vivians too many? Real, real talk. Am I supposed to just cut these and be like four Pulse, four Vivian? 
and just like we could just kind of board into green black mid range if we want to post board what if what if i did this i feel i feel like this isn't unreasonable let's do it let's just do let's just do that just have have the option of full 15 Historic's great. I'm having fun playing Historic. If you're wondering what happened to Standard, I'd encourage you to go watch the last couple of Standard videos. I've got a number of Standard decks in the queue that I'm going to be... a number of Standard decks in the queue that we're definitely going to be playing through. Yeah, con constantly getting Brazen Borrower just really sucks. I mean, I also think, like, it's important to understand that it's important to understand that, like, just because I'm not enjoying Standard right now doesn't mean Standard is bad. Magic's a lot of things to a lot of different people, and Standard can't always be brew-friendly. Brew like, format, format stabilizes, and if you're someone that enjoys playing in stable formats with a good... If you like playing... Teamer, Teamer Adventures, or Teamer Reclamation, or Just Kai Fires, or Blue White Control, or Red Black Sack, or any of the other decks that are good, Standard is fine right now. None of those decks really speak to me personally, and there's not a lot of room to brew in the format, which a lot of what I do on this stream is people submitting brews for me to play. So the business model that I have here doesn't really work in the current standard format. It just, it doesn't. And that doesn't mean standard is bad. It just means I need to play less standard here because they're not really good games of magic. Well... I'm not sure that this matchup is winnable for us. So our combo could deal a large chunk of damage, but they can almost assuredly get out of range of that. I guess, I guess we'll find out, huh? I guess we'll find out. Does someone donate $100? I would play Vintage Cube. Yes. My friend Benjamin, I would play Vintage Cube. I would play Vintage Cube at the end of today's stream for a Benjamin. I will add add Vintage Cube after Green Black Citadel. Um, in my opinion, if the news Bernie is suspending his campaign is accurate, I think that is the right thing for him to do. While there is still an astronomically small situation in which he could win the nomination, people voting at this point in time is a literal health risk to them and others. I think if COVID wasn't happening right now, I would probably feel a little bit differently, but the reality of the odds he's facing in conjunction with what's going on in the world right now means that it's correct for him to suspend. So again, just to make it abundantly clear, I have never at any point been some biased Bernie bro. I have always been a, peer, a parent to reality and understood how things work in the world. Just, just to let the record reflect. How would you feel if Biden made Bernie his VP? I would donate money to Biden's campaign and I would leave a banner for their campaign up on the screen. I don't think that's likely to happen. But if that happened, that is what I would do. That would please me. I don't think that will happen. Oh, yeah, it can't happen. Yeah, he committed to making having a female VP at the last debate. 
admitted to having a female VP at the last debate. That definitely, definitely happened. Oh god, this is about to be awful. I don't know if we can actually kill them, but we're going to try. I'm going to see exactly how much damage we can deal here. Yeah, always, always yield when. So I need to get as many Nightmare Shepherds as possible into play here. And then I do this, which untaps Vanna Fear. So I only have one untap left then. So I need to use this to turn this into a Gray Merchant. Allegedly average. Thank you for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome to Oglandia. Thanks for keeping me around. Yes, multiple shepherds are just for devotion. I think we're going to be a few points short at a minimum. I believe... Um, I believe we can deal 33 from here, I believe is the number. Yeah, so we're up to 34, and then next turn I have a spark double for a gray merchant. And like they can't zero a Johnny at the moment. So I can sack both Garys, which gains them two and then deals 22 to them. The, the spark double might let us win the game next turn. Yeah, so this'll do 20, it's technically 24 because they gain two. But if I can wait to sack these, these also both will deal an extra, extra bit of damage. Where's the Mayhem Devil rate? Or if Soul Warden wasn't wasn't both players.
This is an intervening if clause, right? Yeah, so if they zero their Ajani, I get to sack Grey Merchant in response, and then Ajani zero doesn't do anything. Just for reference here, they should not zero Ajani. I think you're being unrealistic, allegedly average, and I think that encouraging people to go out and vote at any time in the next little while is incredibly irresponsible. I think the fact that primaries were held yesterday was almost assuredly a public health risk, and it was irresponsible for every state that held them. So maybe you're young and healthy and not immunocompromised. But other people don't have those privileges. So can I kill them next turn? So this will deal 24. And then each of these will deal 12. Right? So that's lethal, right? 24, 12, 12. Because it's 13, 13, 13 minus 4. Yeah, I believe I believe I just block here, take 28. Yeah, we just jump the 34 token. And then we untap and kill them. Remember when someone asked what the spark double was for? And I said, normally you don't need it, but just in case. In, in case of emergency, please break spark double. I don't have another gray merchant. I only have two. Yeah, I, I counted them gaining one for each chat because I'm draining for 13. So I'm dealing 13, they're gaining one. So when I said they deal 12, I calculated that. You love, you love to see it. This poor man's such gasoline. What a game of magic. Triggers. Goodbye, Felicia. And Soul Warden must be exhausted, right? She's, she's seen some stuff. All right, so is this just a four Maelstrom Pulse in matchup? What do we what do we think of that? Four Maelstrom Pulse. Do I want Chupacabra as well? Chupacabra not only is removal, but it technically ups my it ups my devotion as well. What am I what am I cutting to fit Chupacabra in though? I don't think I want to go lower than seven of these. And like these are pretty much untouchable. Spark doubles normally what you trim, but obviously I can't do that here. Is it just mana creatures? It might just be mana creatures, right? I think it's elf out. I don't think I can trim Gilded Goose when I'm bringing in a bunch of black cards. I think I need I think I need the fixing from it. Biscuit Man, thanks for the five months. Welcome back. 
I think this is too slow. Yeah, I think this is too slow. In it to win it, chat. I would just like the record to reflect that if we don't hit our blue source an appropriate amount of time, it's because Twitch chat didn't believe enough. So I just, I need you to believe, Twitch chat. I need you to believe. I believe, I believe, I believe. Do -do 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 -do. I appreciate all of you for never doubting me. I dedicate this to all of you at home. Stay safe out there. All right, if we get to untap with this bad mamma jamma, we win the game. You'll love to see it. Survey says, do you have a Conclave Tribunal? Do you have a Conclave Tribunal? Yep, we have a Conclave Tribunal. Rats. Maelstrom Pulse. Maelstrom Pulse. Let's top deck another or something like that. We have four pulse in our deck to draw through. Devout Decree. You hate to see it. I guess I keep that because it's the second black source for Nightmare Shepherd, which lets me, gives me infinite blocking. Like, I wanted to dig aggressively for like another van or a pulse to get our first one back, but I think I just keep second black source here for sure. Did both sides board and all the removal they have? Very likely. Matches like this tend to be more interactive post board most of the time. Game one, run for linear game. Games two, three, worry about their deck. Exactly. Probably dead. Get to smack them for four here to try and keep their health total low enough for this not to turn on just yet. Need to need to peel a live one like next turn though. Either get our Vanifier back or draw another one. I'm going to jump through 7-7 seven, seven and take 9 here, I think. Yeah. We're dead regardless, right? Just everything's lethal. I think I'm happy with how I boarded. I'm just going to go ahead and run it back. Thanks for the 13 months. Too much dog. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Good enough. Yeah, 
think Toxic Deluge and Historic would be okay or too strong. That card's probably fine here. I think that card's a pretty okay power level overall. Do this, play an untapped land so that way I can make a food with my other goose. Three mana, nearly unconditional wrath seems way strong. I mean, it has a super real cost associated with it. I think rather than deluge, I think the the sweeper I would like to see printed into this format is um languish. I think that's an appropriate power level card for this format. I think uh, Crux of Fate. I don't think I want Damnation, but I think Crux of Fate could be a really good one. There's one one I wouldn't mind seeing. Maybe we got a, uh, a Dragons-themed historic anthologies at some point. Included Crux of Fate. Those would be those would be my personal two picks for things to consider bringing into the format. I think I think printing damnation would be a mistake. I think crux of fader language would both be good options. Ooh, black sun zenith. I like that one. Black sun zenith could be okay. I'd be down down for the black sun zenith. This thing's pretty close to 30. Yeah, I should have waited on the pulse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're pretty dead. It's possible we just can't really afford to board out the Neo forms just because our deck just flops around too much when it doesn't have Vanifier. What's going on, the hell, dude? Even if we top decked another pulse there, we just like taking so much damage. They still have a pretty dominating board. Yeah, I agree. I think sweepers always having some kind of conditional is ideal. Cards, cards that are conditional mean that there's more counterplay from the other side of the board. Which is, which is good. Sure, Zan's got all of our colors in it. Doesn't have a Vanifier, but it's got an Accelerant and an Incubation. Ooh, Vampires, perhaps? Perfect, there's a Vanifier. We just will shredder, right? Sad. All right. Might as well attack, I'm not blocking. Really want another black source here so we can play Nightmare Shepherd out of hand. 
of scary. Oh, they shocked and took three. I was like, why did those get counters? Because they shocked and took three. So, I think they messed up here. If they would have... Five. No, they would have been one short. All right, can they kill Vanifir or are they dead? I think they're dead, right? I believe I believe they're dead. Because I have the corridor monitor. So step one is blue is the color thanks for 13 months step one is always get nightmare shepherd into play so we'll do that then we untap the vanifier then we sacrifice corridor monitor corridor monitor comes back with nightmare shepherd untaps vanifier this vanifier trigger gets a woe strider Vanifier sacrifices this. Uh, wait, that's wrong, right? Is that wrong? No, that's right. So Vanifier sacrifices this. We get a Tower Scout. Tower Scout untaps this. Vanifier sacrifices... I'm going to ignore this Land War Elf because we can win without it just to demonstrate how you only need one one drop. So you only need one one drop plus the two mana untapper in your hand. We sacrifice this to the Woe Strider. So this comes back. We get to untap Vanifier. Now we go ahead and use Vanifier to sacrifice this goose. So you'll get another two mana untapper. Now we sacrifice this token over here and turn it into another Nightmare Shepherd. Then we sacrifice this Corridor Monitor. It comes back and untaps Vanifier. Now we sacrifice this corridor monitor and go get another Tower Scout. Tower Scout untaps this. We get to go ahead and sacrifice Nightmare Shepherd, which goes and gets a Grey Merchant. So again, I could have done this with less clicks by utilizing the other Land War Elf I had in play, but I wanted to highlight that having the Land War Elf in play is not a requirement to combo from here. You can go off with less than that. Then we sacrifice this other Nightmare Shepherd to get the other Grey Merchant, which deals 9. And then we could also sacrifice both Grey Merchants to deal an additional 18. I think Vanifier ever gets annoyed with walking lanterns and elves? Asking the real question. It's just like walking up to Vanifier like, Vanifier, Vanifier, please, I need you again, Vanifier. Vanifier, Vanifier, there's someone in the corridor. Vanifier, Vanifier, please wake up, Vanifier. Vanifier, Vanifier, Vanifier. That's basically, that's basically Vanifier's life, right? Just like, constant. It's like, these are like four, th four and five year olds. They're just like tugging on Vanifier's sleeve. Like, Pod Bomb, Pod Bomb, we need you. We need you, Pod Bomb. Pod Bob, the vampires are coming, Pod Bob. Mom, 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 mom. <laughs> so I think this is going to be my go-to board plan here. We only left in Spark Double against the last deck because we need to really go over the top of how much damage we deal. So I think we trim this and we trim the two incubations and we bring in uh, Maelstrom Pulse. Just, this is kind of just a generic catch-all. This kills Graft Diggers, Cages, and Ley Lines of the Voids, and all sorts of random hate cards. And then when they don't draw their hate cards, this also just interacts with their board. So I think this is this seems reasonable. Oh, Gary's the dad? Yeah, probably. Um... 
Ain't we mulligan this? So, like, it's kind of appealing because I have all my colors with the goose. But, like, having Grey Merchant in my hand is kind of like a dead draw. And, like, I don't have Maelstrom Pulse. I don't have an easy route to a Vanifier. This is, this is great. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to bottom Maelstrom Pulse. How's Podmon Ben? A lot of fun. This is this is the type of deck where like even when we don't win our matches, we still have fun playing it. Which makes it a great choice. I think I'm just playing Corridor Monitor here as a blocker. I feel like that's pretty reasonable. Just stem the bleeding from this 1-3. Well, you know, we tried. I'm being a little aggressive with this. I'll just buy Felicia that one. So, I'm not under so much pressure here that I need to combo next turn. So, I think I'm going to lead on Nightmare Shepherd here. So, that way, they have to have two removal spells. So, this way, if they kill Vanifier after I play her, she comes back. Oh, no! This is a hate card we care about! Oh, oh, no! Oh no! I didn't even I didn't even think about this card. Oh no! Our opponent is so smart. Why are you so smart, opponent? Who put good cards in your deck? Oh no! My poor nightmare shepherd tokens, chat. Our opponent is on like the biggest of brains. Oh! You know what? Reclamation Sage is legal in this format. We need a Rex Sage. Why isn't there a Rex Sage in my deck, chat? Why why isn't there a Rex Sage in my deck? Well, golly. I this is good though. I feel like we're learning a lot, huh? Well, no, Rex Sage isn't standard legal. So this deck, I copied, I started with the standard list. And Rex Sage wasn't standard legal, so she wasn't in here. Yeah, the token's still on tap, Vanifier. So, like, we've got that going for us, I guess. Yeah, I guess we just, like, clock them with Nightmare Shepherd is the plan. Yeah, okay, so people that are talking about Vivian, like, I have Maelstrom Pulse in my deck right now. I'm not just cold to this card. It's just I can't combo with it out. And what's it called? Um, what's it called is a good, a good choice. Reclamation Sage is a better choice than Maelstrom Pulse or Vivian because I can tutor for Reclamation Sage. Yeah, we're, we're not just dead here by any means, chat. We, we, we might be okay with these Nightmare Shepherds beating down if they don't have removal spells. But, like, again, it's worth noting, I'm just highlighting that, like, this wasn't an angle of attacking this deck that I was considering during deck building. And Reclamation Sage is a very easy solution to that. So, like, I'm going to bring in the fourth Maelstrom Pulse, but, like, this just wasn't even a card on my radar as far as, like, things I should be worried about. If that makes sense. Can I kill them with Grey Merchant here? I think we can kill them with Grey Merchant here, right? Maybe... Am I one short? 
Should I have made Tower Scout another Shepherd last turn? Yes. Yes, I should have. So I can attack them. Wait, this is this is another Nightmare Shepherd, right? Yeah, I think I think they're dead because I drew the elf. So this Hey, Lieutenant Dan. I'm glad you're staying safe at least. Thanks for keeping me around. Okay, so... So I can get Woe Strider. And then this turns into a Nightmare Shepherd and untaps this. And then Nightmare Shepherd turns into Grey Merchant, deals five. And then this can turn into another Grey Merchant? I believe, I believe that works. So we sack we sack this. It comes back. It untaps me in a fear. We get this. Then we sack the nightmare shepherd. Get gray merchant. Gray merchant deals five. Then we play this out. Untap Vanifier. Vanifier turns this into a Grey Merchant. Deal five more. And then I technically could sack these to deal three and then one. All right, so they're dead. We did We did it. All right, there should definitely be a Reclamation Sage in my deck. And I definitely need to be thinking about Virulent Plague when sideboarding against black decks. So Sage, Sage goes in the sideboard and it just always comes in against black decks is the, the lesson learned from that game. Do I want two? Do I want two of these? I feel like I might want two of these. So one of the things that I like to highlight when we're playing this deck is that people often say like, well, the hard part of the deck is remembering how to linearly combo people. Linearly comboing people is the entry fee to this deck. If you can't remember how to combo people when they have no disruption, you can't play this deck. The hard part about this deck is navigating games like that one we just played where there's disruption or things aren't going right and you have to piece together the win from minimal amounts of resources. Those are those are the tough games. We even get to throw the Grey Merchant back into our deck. This scene is so good. So, Vivian is in our sideboard. This is smart. Killing the, killing the elf here. It puts us a turn behind. Um, Vivian is in the sideboard for when we want to be interactive. For when we want to play against interactive decks. It's a card that sits and generates card advantage and finds us our combo piece, Podmom, while also dealing with cards like Leyline and Virulent Plague and uh, Sorcerer's Spyglass and Graph Digger's Cage. Okay, and now because of that, because we drew this, I'm not under enough pressure currently to warrant just jamming this. So because our health total's high here, I'm gonna take a turn and make them have two removal spells. So 
Domri's Domri's ambush is a real card that they could be playing. Man, I'm super excited to uh, put this deck up on the website too. I'm gonna be. I need to sit down and this weekend I'm gonna push around some things on the website. I think, or maybe one one evening this week. Need to put some disclaimers on the standard page. A lot of the decks up there now are bad. Excuse me. Uh, trigger. R resolves. Yeah, they, they definitely should have ambushed my Nightmare Shepherd. Is there any good way to give speaker haste and standard? So here's the thing. Again, this is actually a really good example of why giving speaker haste shows you have a fundamental misunderstanding of how this deck works. Giving speaker haste is awkward and it's generally not useful. You, ha you can't combo the turn you play speaker if you can't play an untapper out from your hand as well. So giving speaker haste doesn't actually let you win the game. It just shows that you don't actually understand how the combo works. So again, yes, there are ways we could give speak Banifier haste, but they're not useful. It's not solving a problem that we have. They have, they have died. And again, I'm going to run around and click a couple extra times here just to illustrate that like we don't need to we don't need to have like this extra corridor monitor in my hand. We can win for less. Yeah, we needed an untapper in this instance because we didn't have a one drop. And there's some there's some combinations of things where like you can go off from from less less or more depending on exactly what the board state looks like. So we'll grab Corridor Monitor here. And now we'll pod Nightmare Shepherd into a Grey Merchant. Deal eight. We'll use Woe Strider to sack this Corridor Monitor, which brings it back into play and untaps Vanifier. Then we'll pod the second Nightmare Shepherd into another Grey Merchant. We can also just like, we can also just sacrifice this Grey Merchant and deal damage that way. So a lot of right ways to eat this Rhesus here. So I could I could deal another 20 points of damage here. I could also deal more by getting more Nightmare Shepherds and Woe Striders into play. Lots of, lots of ways to overkill in this instance. It's going to board in a grip full of Maelstrom Pulses, I think. God, this card was such a good upgrade for this deck. I guess it's similar to Assassin's Trophy. It's sim similar to Trophy. Good for a lot of the same reasons. Standard build was playing Trophy. This just cleans up zombies, which is nice. Against uh, Field of the Dead. Randomly, randomly 240 people. Also stellar. Cause it's a sneeper keeper do 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 sneep up ba keep up ba do 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 Land Worlds is busted chat.
all about the lane war elves. Don't stop my elf. Don't stop my elf. Don't stop my elf. Well, I mean, that's aggressive. It's a great draw. I'm really surprised that they lava coil. Like, stomping my elf there is stellar. I feel like burning a lava coil or removal spell that could be killing a shepherd or a prime speaker is a big deal there. And again, because I'm just not under an incredible amount of pressure here, I'm going to go ahead and lead on Nightmare Shepherd because it insulates my Vanifier a little bit. Oh man, we're about to get cleaved. Feels bad, man. Well, if they have a second Lava Coil, I can't play around it at this point. So, you know, YOLO. We're dead to a Stiff Breeze. We're not dead on board, but we're dead to a Stiff Breeze. So we're going to two here, dead to a Bone Crusher. Also basically dead to a Lava Coil, but they would have Lava Coil pre-combat, so I assume they don't have that. All right, so they're dead. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Kuriyami. Hope you're staying safe in these crazy times. Thanks for the 20 months of support. A lot of, lot of white right ways to eat this Reese's at this point. Just for reference, if you're ever playing against this deck, they're currently dead just based on the board state, regardless of the cards that are in my hand. Havikin RN, thank you for the brand new Prime support. Welcome to Oglandia. Thanks for keeping me employed this month with that. Yes, yeah, exactly. Nightmare Shepherd is one of the really awesome cards of this deck just because of its ability to insulate. They don't know if I, even if I had both Grey Merchants in my hand right now, I have five mana to cast one and I only need to cast one of them to win this game. So even if I had both Grey Merchants in my hand, they're still dead in this instance. Elephate Gaming, thank you for the 19 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I mean, I don't, I don't mind showing off. If I didn't like mechanically going through this deck, I wouldn't play it. Then we sack this one, it comes back, it untaps the mana fear. We sack the other Nightmare Shepherd, we get the other Grey Merchant. Get all my beautiful tokens, chat. Aren't they great? We have a Scry that doesn't matter. We could also attack for four and then just sack this one for another seven, but why win the game by getting my hands dirty when we can win with Grey Merchant triggers, really? And again, you could overkill for varying amounts, but just get them. Good times, good times. Let's try, let's try one more before we call it a day with this one and move on to some green black citadel. Was that turn four? I think it was turn five. I'm pretty sure I missed a land drop that game. You can theoretically combo on turn four if you play Vanifier turn three, though. Deck's been great. It's been a lot of fun. Get some solid small upgrades in both the main deck and the sideboard. Easy mulligan. Mediocre keep? I think it's a mediocre keep.
My students are slowly starting to realize that classes do n do in fact. My are slowly starting to realize that classes do in fact resume on Monday digitally, right? Um, I believe ISU, the state school near my in Bloomington where I live, they announced that they weren't going to have students returning to campus this year or this uh, this semester. I don't know if any of U.S. universities isn't doing that. Yeah, most most of them are. Or, are, sorry, are most of them canceled through the end of the semester, too? That's good to hear. In Alberta, Canada, school is canceled for the year. Uni where I live just prorated their grade based on where they were and gave them that. That's an approach. What, you, what kind of grade do you think you got? All right, good. Let's work with that. When is the end of the semester in the US? It depends on the school. So I was really hoping for a Venafir or another Nightmare Shepherd there, or heck, even a Woe Strider. Another land's not going to do it. If they have, like, anything else left here, we're probably just dead. Hopefully they're sitting on bricks as well. Yeah, I get to I get to go to three here and, like, trade elves, eat, eat their 3-3 three, three when they attack with all. I'm dead now because I didn't play. I'm dead because I didn't play the 1-4 out. Well, I guess I can do this again, right? Feels, feels magic the gathering, man. Should have attacked for four, had an untapped trigger I spewed. All right, didn't, didn't matter. Got it. Well, at least we know how we're sideboarding, huh? Work wasn't taking the virus seriously and wasn't letting us work from home. We staged a mutiny and half of us called in sick on Monday. They're not letting us work from indefinitely. Good. I just come back from lunch to hear about someone seizing the means of production. It feels like you always bring a Maelstrom Pulse to be worth main decking. This is a good a good chance to talk about deck building theory and how sideboarding works. So, one of the key things you need to understand about sideboarding and why there's so much depth to it is that you're not sideboarding against the deck you just played against. You need to sideboard against the deck that you're going to be playing against. And what I mean by that is Maelstrom Pulse is always coming in because I expect my opponents to be bringing in hate cards that are good against the combo deck that I'm playing. So, for instance, Maelstrom Pulse is good against Virulent Plague and Graf Digger's Cage and Leyline of the Void, while also just being an okay generic removal spell to help me control the board should they not have any of those hate cards. 
So the things I want Maelstrom Pulse in my deck to deal with are not things that are relevant during, during the first game of a match, generally speaking. Brain Pope, Brain Pipe, thanks for the two months. I appreciate the continued support. Welcome back. A friend that works for Tesla, Musk has gone off the deep end. He won't let anyone work from home. Claimed that none of his staff were at risk due to the age group and they should come to work as normal. Well, we knew he was largely insane. It's nice to have it verified. At this point, what he's doing is illegal. Yeah, basically. One of, one of the things to understand is just because you frequently sideboard a card out or you frequently board a card in doesn't mean it's not a card you shouldn't you should you shouldn't be playing or a card that needs to go in your main deck. Hey, an untapped land, please. Thanks. All of our lands are untapped because they're great. I spent my entire night last night playing the Legend of the Keepers demo. It's a super fun game. Thanks for streaming it. Hey, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Hey, thanks for the biddies, Brian. Hope you're staying safe in these crazy times. So I don't currently have an untapper in my hand, so I actually cannot combo kill them next turn. So what's my closest path to lethal here? It's probably set up for the two-turn lethals. There are no honest billionaires. You do not become a billionaire except by abusing systems that exploit vulnerable people. So this will this will likely be a two turn kill we're gonna set up here. We'll get Nightmare Shepherd into play this turn, get Woe Strider down, and then next turn we can get set up to kill them, I believe. Or can we not even? I need a one or a two drop. I need like a mana dork or an untapper next turn. Nobody makes a billion dollars, they steal it. Correct. Yeah, Strider protects Vanifier from Lava Coil here, which is great. Lucos, thanks for the 60 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Made billions for selling Minecraft. And where do you think the company that paid him billions for Minecraft got that money to pay him from? Just out of, out of curiosity. What if I pull myself by my bootstraps really hard? It's a good, it's a good question. All right, so they're dead. Crap. I forgot the other gray merchant was in my hand. Well, that makes this harder. Should have been paying more attention. I don't. I don't have my. I boarded out my spark double too. I can. I can kill them by attacking. It'll be okay. 
Okay, so I still have a Captain Devil, we'll just have to get her hands dirty. Yeah, sorry, I apologize to everybody who's offended by the combat step. It is, it is what it is. Combat step unsubscribed, right? At what dollar value does it become unethical to be worth that much money? Um, I don't know. Pro probably somewhere in the low millions. I'd, I'd estimate probably somewhere in the low millions. I apologize for the rumbling currently going on above my head. There are children in my house. Yeah, I could have gotten a Woe Strider too and then done 13. Yeah, I don't actually don't think we needed the combat step there. I think I could have I could have gotten Woe Strider plus that and then done exactly 13. I think we could have done exactly 13 there with the one. You never need the combat step, it's just a crush. That's fair. Fair assessment. This hand really wants to draw a mana dork on one, but I think it's keepable. Gordor Monitor is actually a great pickup because it's a good defensive creature. That's terrifying. My, my. How you so that's just a removal spell sitting in play here. So we just pulse her. And then like, hope this Vanifier lives is the plan. That's usually most of the plans with this deck involve crossing your fingers and hoping your Vanifier untaps. Oh, the girl matchup stuff they have reasonable disruption and a pretty fast clock nah you only become a billionaire through unethical means it's just that's just the reality people people who who make the argument that you can become a billionaire through through ethical means don't have a fundamental grasp on how much money a billion dollars is you just you don't <laughs> you, do, you don't understand what a grossly large sum of money that is. All right. Anywho, I feel like we got to a pretty good spot here. Most of most of the tuning we did was in the sideboard. Thanks for the 15 months far side. I appreciate that. Welcome back. In fact, all the tuning past the... Past the... Uh, the mana base at the start was in the sideboard. And I really, I really think Vivian Reed seems like everything this deck was looking for, for like the fair mid-range control matchup. Like having a constant flow of creatures, being a little bit interactive, having an emblem that eventually wins the game. All of, all of these things are things we're super in for. Uh, Maelstrom Pulse is just a really good catch-all cleanup card. Reclamation Sage is a stellar upgrade in Historic that we don't have access to in Standard. This also kills Virulent Plague, which is a card that caught me off guard because Virulent Plague kills our Nightmare Shepherd tokens, which is a big deal. Past the mana base, the sideboard cards, the big upgrade the Zerktip Geens in Historic is the extra Land War Elves in the main deck. Having eight good one mana accelerants is a big deal because Vanifier plus a one drop is your easiest way to combo. So having eight that are just great to play increases your combo percentage by a good deal, which is nice.
If you're looking for gameplay with this deck, you can see us play it in standard number of times on my website. I'm sure we're going to get back to it in Historic again. It's a good old, good old time. At any rate, I'm going to hit a quick ad roll while I get things restarted and flipped over for the next deck. When we get back, we are going to jam with some uh, green, black, scape shift citadel here. So we've got some dryad of the grove, some dread presence, some bolas of citadel, whole bunch of schwamps. We'll be back in just a few. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere.